Good morning everyone. Today I'm going to show you something very interesting. No, it's not the city hall. I'm sure there's a lot to see there. But what I want to show you is outside on San Pedro Street. This is part of the ongoing underground cabling project here in Davao City. And if you go around, you'll really be impressed. Usually you'd have a crisscross of wires going all across the road, power lines, telephone lines. But look, it's clean. It's all underground. Can you imagine if you did the whole city like this? Metro Manila has been talking about doing this for how many years already? They do studies, they do coordination, feasibility. Someone actually did it. That's the thing, someone did it. Look at how it looks. This is what most of us are used to seeing. A spaghetti of wires all over the place. When you get a new telephone line, add another wire. New internet, add another wire. The old ones, never removed. This is the exact problem that they're trying to fix here. Here's an example of the wires that they were dealing with before. Obviously they've all been cut and they'll eventually be removed. Because remember, this is an ongoing project, especially San Pedro Street, that's phase two, I believe. So that's what they were dealing with before they put everything underground. So here's a nice wide sidewalk. And then if you look over here, you'll see the wires coming up. That's how it's done. So it all runs underground and it comes up like this. Now, before I came here, I looked on Google Maps so that I'd have an idea of what to expect. So I know already, this is how the power lines come up. See how tidy that is, compared to before when they would just be running everywhere. If we go behind City Hall, you'll see the same thing. Again, it's not 100% complete yet, but look, there's no crisscrossing wires all over the place. Maybe what I should do is go on Google Maps and then cut in some images through this video of how it looked before and how it looks now. Because it's a subtle difference. Maybe you wouldn't notice it at first, but when you walk around, you get this feeling, hey, why is it so open and clean? Why does it feel so nice? And I don't just mean because the sidewalks are wide and that they're not, you know, fully occupied by vendors, but also just the wires, removing them makes a big difference. Do you know another thing that I notice here in Davao City? Everyone is wearing a helmet. And I don't just mean most people, I mean everyone. The ride from the airport into the city, I didn't see a single rider that's not wearing a helmet. Every place I've gone, they're all wearing motorcycle helmets. I spoke to some of the riders, I said, you don't want to have the Jan Lang Akau Gang here? The Jan Lang, Jan Lang, Jan Lang? They said, no, you really have to wear a helmet. It's strictly enforced here. Here's something else that you often don't see in Metro Manila. The cap for the fire hydrant. A lot of times people say to me, are you sure the fire hydrant's still working? It doesn't have a cap. And then I asked BFP, why don't any of the fire hydrants have caps? They said they keep getting stolen. But here in Davao, look, they still have their cap. I know it's, it's a simple thing, but it's there. It's the kind of thing that I notice. It would have been nice if I went here earlier and saw them putting the cables underground so we could ask them, what kind of challenges did you face? What were the difficulties? Because I'm sure there's some adjustment needed. Maybe there'll be a day or two without internet, without telephone for some people, or maybe they have some kind of redundancy. Very curious to know exactly what's required. Because this is better. If you could do this nationwide, this is better. This is off topic from the underground cabling project, but I just spotted this kids park. Look at how nice it is. I had a really frustrating experience the other day. I contacted a city hall, I won't mention which one, specifically the department that deals with parks like this. And I asked them, can you give me a list of your parks that have been adopted by MMBA because that means they've been refurbished and now modern. And I just wanted to go and look at one. And then they replied saying, can you please send a formal request letter? Why do you have to send a formal request letter? I just want to know where the park is. I don't want to be disrespectful to them. I understand there are protocols and procedures, but can't a normal person just ask where the park is for a list of parks? Seems like a lot of red tape and bureaucracy for a simple request. And this is interesting, they actually have rules. For example, you cannot go inside if you're 11 or older. And that's actually one of the big problems in many countries. They have parks like this, but teenagers hang out there, they smoke, they shout, they cast, they drink alcohol, and then nobody wants to take their kid there. So limiting it to 11 years old or younger is probably a good idea. Look, here's another street, no more wires. It's not the whole of Davao, don't get me wrong, it's not the whole of Davao. 
there's still a lot of streets that need to be done but they're doing it in phases and you can already start to see it looks pretty awesome I just saw this sign a drug-free city and it reminded me of something when I went here someone said are you sure you want to go around by yourself are you gonna be okay I said it's Davao city <laughs> I'm not worried. As long as I don't do something wrong, I'm not worried, right? Just follow the law and I won't have a problem. Anyway, this is corner of CM Recto. And again, you can see, no more wires, look. Incredible, huh? I know for some people you might say, ah, it's, so what? It's been done in the West, that's standard. Well, maybe it is, but here in the Philippines, this is not standard. This is above and beyond. This is next level. This is a big improvement. In fact, look, here's one of the open trenches ready to take the power and telephone lines at least i asked a guy nearby he said definitely they're for the power lines so i'd assume that the telephone lines will also go here sayang there's no one here from dpwh or from the electric company that i could ask probably i should have done coordination beforehand but i just happened to be here and i thought okay since i'm in davao let's go and look at this in fact, I just bumped into some of the workers further along and I confirmed, yes, everything will go underground. The internet, the telephone, the power, just like on the other streets that we saw, they run them in those pipes to keep them protected. In fact, look, just five meters from that trench, you can already see where the cable is going to come up. Obviously, they'll put those inside a metal tube. But yeah, soon this spaghetti mess of wires here will all be underground. Another thing I noticed with the taxis is that you just get in and tell them where you want to go. Not like Metro Manila where they open the window and they say, where are you going? And then they say, oh, plus 50. Or I don't want to go there, it's too far. Or it's too traffic. It's too hot, it's too cold. Grabe, and tahaming reasons in Manila. Here you just get in a taxi and they take you. And every single taxi has a dash cam. I said to them, did you install this? Like, is it required? He said, yeah, if you don't have a dash cam in Davao City in the taxi, it's a 5,000 peso penalty. And that's the way it should be. So if something happens, if something goes wrong, there's video proof of what happened. Dash cams are a good idea, especially for PUVs, for PUJs, for any kind of public transport. Here's another thing that I noticed. Look at every jeepney driver that comes past. You'll see he's wearing shirt and pants. Compared to Metro Manila, where the uniform became sandal, shorts, slippers, Yossi, and then they say, oh, it's too hot. That's why we have to drive like that. It's hotter here in Davao, but they're still wearing the uniform. They're still wearing the proper stuff. Look, he has a shirt, he has pants. It's really like that. I noticed it when I'm riding. There's no sandal, there's no shorts, there's no Yossi. In fact, when you land here in Davao, they remind you that it's illegal to smoke in public places, especially around public transport. Now, although I'm highlighting some differences, I still love Metro Manila. But the point is, there's a lot of things that can be improved. That's the point of my video, not to show the problems, but to show what's been done to fix them. To improve the life, to lift the quality of life. Sometimes people comment and they say, oh, the Philippines is in the West, don't expect too much. Why? Why can't you expect a high quality of living? Why can't you expect a good service, right? Let's lift the quality for everybody. So here's one of my experiences. Uh, this is JP opened the window and asked where are you going so i said uh davao city hall to the city hall and very kindly offered me a ride yeah so jp you're i know a fashion designer yes i'm a fashion designer by profession and actually my shop is over there so as a good samaritan and as a uh, good by citizen here in davao so, so i give him a lift thank you so there goes my ride now it was just by chance i came out of the mall just had my hair cut i was walking along the sidewalk i was going to walk back to city hall and i was waiting for someone to reverse out of their parking and then they opened their window and said where are you going so i said oh i'm just waiting for you to to reverse your car and then i'm gonna keep walking and then they said no where are you going so i said city hall and then they said i'll give you a ride so thank you so much anyway just a quick video i have no idea how long it will be I don't have much time to go around Davao, so I just wanted to shoot this quickly. Thanks for watching.